Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Two days ago I saw a news story on archeonews.net stating the inhabitants of Pinabasi Hoyuk in central Turkey may be the ancestors of Bonkuklu Hoyuk and Chattel Hoyuk Neolithic human communities. Like many of you, I'd heard of Chattel Hoyuk, the Neolithic and Chalcolithic proto-city that existed from 7500 to 6400 BC, but I knew nothing about Pinabasi Hoyuk and if the people that lived there were the ancestors of the people of Chattel Hoyuk, it must be a very ancient site indeed. The news story originates from just one tweet and this was made by the Department of Excavations and Research in Turkey and on finding the tweet and then translating it into English, well as you're about to find out it was extremely interesting. It said excavations in the area which is considered to be the oldest known cemetery in Anatolia, 14,000 BC in Karaman Pinabasi, shows that Pinabasi people may be the ancestors of Bonkuklu Hoyuk and Chattel Hoyuk Neolithic human communities. Now, a cemetery dating back 16,000 years is a big discovery. That's more than 3,000 years before the Younger Dryas, more than 4,000 years before the first stone was erected at Gebekli Tepe, so I am surprised it isn't making more headlines. Now, a recent news story has shown that, to some extent, the ancient site of Gebekli Tepe did have an outside influence, as shown by the study of lithics, some of which apparently had an ancient Iranian and Siberian origin. But as genetic studies have shown previously, Central Anatolian Neolithic farmers shared 90% of their genetics with local Anatolian hunter-gatherers, meaning that discoveries like the new Pinabasi Cemetery may well be telling us something about the ancestors of not just Chattel Hoyuk and Bonkuklu Hoyuk, but maybe also the pre-pottery Neolithic sites of the East. Pinabasi Hoyuk could therefore be an extremely important site in the history of Anatolia, in the human story more generally. It was discovered in 1993 when a settlement dating back to 9000 BC was found, but in the underlying sediments there was a 16,000 year old cemetery and considerable evidence for prehistoric occupation. So this is big news. The history of this part of the world just seems to get older and older. In January this year, I reported another story that was not being discussed in the wider media. A 16,500 year old cave settlement in Turkey, situated around 250 kilometers to the northwest of the cemetery. Just like Pinabasi, it too shows habitation from the Epi Paleolithic and Neolithic. Now, being on the outside of academia means that, for me, a YouTuber, finding quality information about the ancient history of Pinabasi is not easy, especially as so many archaeological papers are written in Turkish. Thankfully, I did find a fantastic paper by Douglas Baird called Pinabasi from Epi Paleolithic Campsite to Sedentarizing Village in Central Anatolia. It is a 40 page study available on ResearchGate and I'll pick out some key points for this video, but if you want to read more, I've left a link in the description below. The study is 10 years old and I'm aware that a lot more work has been done in recent years, but this does give us some background. In the older Epi Paleolithic layers, Archaeologists found lithics and microlithic assemblages and the objects found suggested that there was a culture in this region contemporary with the Natufians of the Levant. Early dating estimates were 14,500 to 12,000 years old, but in 2012 no carbon-14 dating had been done. At the site there was a high percentage of obsidian tools as well as flint and chert, but no napping was done on site. In those times, this area was a wetland setting, probably a lake edge, 
as we find evidence of reeds in the sediment, as well as fish bones from small carp. We also know there would have been an abundance of pistachio trees. There is also a layer of ash, likely from human activity, and one possible hearth had been identified at the time of writing. No substantial structures were found, but because this site was some distance from the margins of an ancient lake, experts believe there would have been some light shelters, probably built with organic materials. People would have also occupied the nearby rock shelters as well. The fact that no stone tools were napped on site leads the experts to believe this wasn't any kind of permanent settlement, but likely a seasonal camp, a place that people went to for a reason. But interestingly, the 2012 study also mentions an epi-paleolithic cemetery where three individuals had been discovered, as well as a grave that was cut for a fourth. A cemetery indicates that this site was visited on a regular basis and that it was maybe some kind of focal point, a site of importance for the people, which isn't too surprising, being so close to this incredible looking geological outcrop. This could have been a major focal point in prehistory, especially if there was also a fishing lake nearby. I believe the cemetery being excavated today is likely the same one mentioned in this study, and so we are set to learn a lot more about these ancient people. What we do know is that all the burials were men, and one of them was buried with a toolkit, meaning we may know which tools were most important to the individual, which could have been part of their own personal identity. The man was buried with two decorated igneous rock shaft straighteners, sandstone bifacially flaked tools, a sandstone groove tool for making bone points and more. He was also buried with two large flakes of flint, an obsidian core, and interestingly a tortoise carapace. The shaft straighteners were the most elaborately decorated objects discovered, and they were also heavily worn, and this showed long term use. The decorated shaft straighteners were not just dumped, but they were buried with the person, indicating they must have had importance to him, and the decoration may therefore have some meaning. Large flakes of flint are also very rare, indicating that they too were important objects to the person. At the site, 114 shells were also discovered all of which were from Mediterranean species, likely from the nearby southern coast of Anatolia. The shells had been pierced to turn them into beads, and may be sewn to textiles for ornamentation. The tortoise shell may well have been worn in some way, maybe as part of a headdress. One of the men buried were aged between 25 and 29 years old, and the body was extended and lying on his back. The head had been removed, but this is thought to have been done some time after burial, as some teeth were found. The burial with the mentioned grave goods, also a man was older. He did have his cranium present, and the grave goods were placed in a single large cache behind his head, and this was then covered with ochre. The amount of reed at the burial indicates he was likely covered by a reed mat. Although believed to be local Anatolian people, after studying the objects, experts know there are strong similarities with the Natufians of the Levant, showing there must have been interaction with people in the south and east. The Pinabasi Cemetery, as well as the finds discussed, show there were mobile groups in Anatolia in the Epi-Paleolithic and having an understanding of these people will no doubt help us to understand the development of the pre-pottery Neolithic sites like Gebekli Tepe, as well as the later Neolithic sites like Chatelhoyuk. Missing pieces of the human story are being discovered all the time, and we continue to see evidence of multi-skilled people with clear burial customs, evidence of art and personal ornamentation, and maybe even a belief system. Pinabasi, with its huge rocky outcrop, was clearly a destination for mobile groups of hunter-gatherers, but because we find a cemetery at the site, it was chosen as a place to bury the dead. 
This could have been a special, dare I say even spiritual place for the ancient people. People native to Anatolia, but with clear links to the ancient Natufians of the Levant. Before I go, as stated in my last video, I'm currently thinking about starting a second channel, this time in my own name, where I can post not just about history, but science, space and travel and other things I'm interested in, and I can start doing live streams and interviews and so on. The concept is a work in progress, I want to use it to practice being on screen, so please do subscribe at youtube.com slash Simpson. I've left a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.